September 2020, three motorcyclists, enjoying a country road trip through the Merodian region of Queensland, Australia, set up camp beside Smothering Creek, only to flee the area when they encounter two Yowies. Here is Ian's account of the night. I had been planning to do a motorcycle trip across India with my two best mates who had retired from the military. We had got to the stage of having our bikes all kitted out and were in the process of organising their transportation to India when the COVID crisis hit and locked down international travel. We were so disappointed that our plans had been dashed. David came up with a plan to do a mini tour somewhere in Queensland, which we all jumped on board with, and we decided on a route through the Burnett region and back to Brisbane. We had reached the township of Bigenden in the mid-afternoon, and after a short break, we decided to travel on and find a place to camp for the night, and found a nice location beside a small creek on the Bruwina Waluga Road, where we set up our tents. Once we had our tents set up we had a look around. It was a really great spot to camp, with big mature gum trees towering over a fairly clear area of cattle grazing country, which was bordered on one side by a bushy creek. We found a trail to a causeway across the creek, which was basically dry, except for a few small pools of water. We became aware of a really pungent smell, which I thought was the smell from a dead animal. I work as a veterinarian and I have smelt all sorts of dead animals and this was somewhat different, but I didn't give it a second thought. We walked back across the causeway to our tents and made some dinner on a portable stove. It was quite cool, as darkness fell, and we sat around for several hours chatting while we ate dinner, which was some tinned braised steak and onions and bread. We all turned in for the night around 10pm, planning to leave at daybreak. I awoke suddenly at one point, and could hear some movement around the tents, and in my sleepy haze, I thought it must be one of the other guys out to relieve himself, and I rolled over to go back to sleep. I snapped awake again when I heard our stove fall over, and I reached for my torch and climbed out of my sleeping bag to see what had happened. My first thoughts were that one of the guys had tripped over in the dark, but when I shone the torch at the stove, which had been knocked off its metal stand, there were no signs of either of the guys. I was trying to work out what had happened, and scanned the torchlight around and couldn't see a thing, but just as I retreated back into my tent, and about to zip up, I heard some strange clicking sounds out in the darkness, and shone the torch out again. In a split second, I was absolutely startled, as the torchlight picked up a huge and dark hairy creature, standing upright and motionless by the creek crossing, about 60 feet away. It was staring directly at me. I panicked, and felt great fear of this massive, and really scraggy looking thing. I shouted out to the guys, and I scrambled to get clear of the tent attempting to keep the light on the creature. I heard David and Michael come bursting out of their tents, and just as they did, I heard some strange clicking sounds again, and the creature turned its gaze swiftly from me, and I immediately heard crashing in the bushes off to our left, where I shone the torch. I couldn't pick up anything in the bush and I shouted to David to look over there. He also shone a torch in that direction. Michael yelled out, it's over here, and David's torch panned around and picked up something large, disappearing into the trees by the creek, and making a really noisy crashing sound as it moved away from us. David shouted, what the hell is that? I immediately shone my torch back to where I originally saw the creature, and caught it disappearing at speed away from us, down the path to the causeway on all fours in a really strange spider-like movement. It was like nothing I had ever seen. At this stage I was frantic, saying to David, we have to get out of here. I tried to explain what I saw, a giant hairy creature, standing on two legs, and looking right at me. I was so fearful of what I had just seen, that I insisted on packing up and leaving. And the guys agreed. We feverishly pulled our tents apart, loaded up the bikes and sped off into the night. My adrenaline levels began to settle down as we finally approached the town of Waluga, on daybreak. The growing daylight eased our demeanors, as we discussed and took stock of what had happened. When I think back about what I had seen, there were three things that really terrified me. Firstly, it was the sheer size of the creature. As a vet, I deal with cattle and horses of all sizes, and this thing was out of this world by size, and easily 9 or 10 feet tall, with scraggy hair but looked muscular. The second thing, which probably was the most terrifying for me, was the look from the creature. I had the impression it was seriously assessing me, and it looked, sort of, calculating. There was intelligence in its creepy animalistic face, and this scared the hell out of me. The last thing, was how it moved when I caught it disappearing into the night. Its movement on its arms and legs was unnatural, and almost mechanical-like, with a weird up and down movement of its limbs, as it crawled quickly into the darkness. I have never seen any animal move this way and I hope I never see it again. We reckon there were two of them, which is what we glimpsed off to our left, and crashing into the creekside brush, when Michael shone the light at it. What an incredible encounter. Ian gave us a great description of his Yowie sighting. When we asked him about the clicking sounds he heard, he said it was a similar sound to a clicking noise we could make with our tongue, 
pressed against the roof of our mouth but louder. He believes this was some type of communication between the two creatures. You have been listening to a witness report from the Yowie Sightings website. Make sure you visit us at yowiesightings.com for detailed witness reports, location investigations with immersive photos and information, to learn about the elusive Australian Yowie, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss our future videos.